Hello you, how are we doing folks, it's Sunday night and it's Audio Who once again for your listening delight. Tonight we have an outing for Fraser Hounds and surprisingly Howie Jameson, both playing, or shall we say paying triple duty in a companion chronicle outing for Patrick Troughton's second doctor with the story Dumb Waiter. Yes indeed, we have a garden party, that is not what it seems. We have two warrior companions from different time periods. Um, we have Carlos, who seems to have fought about the air and he's a waiter. We have the fourth doctor staying behind. We have a time ring and we have a mystery that's with a piece of the puzzle are trying to be put into place. What do you think about this tale? Well, you're about to find out, but before we get to that, let's get to who did show up here this evening. Joining us from NYC, it's Mr. Will Medina. How are we doing, Will? Hey, now. How are you doing, everybody? Good to see you, mate. Other than Matt, it's Sue. How are we doing, Sue? Fantabulous. Wicked good. Good to see you. Other than the inner sanctum of his own bedroom, we haven't forgotten him this week. It's Jake. How are we doing, Jake? I'm doing fine. Welcome to my dominion, darling. Hello, you. Yes, thank you, mate. And other from Texas, here's a bit that must be feared. Enjoying this Sunday off. Texas time well. Something gone, Timbo. What it is. What it is, indeed. Good luck to your buddy, AJ, who's uh, applying for a job this evening. And as for our regular fare from Tottenham, fuck no, we'll maybe see him next week. So, um, dumb waiter, we have once again two eras of Doctor Who somewhat crossing over. It happened slightly semi before with uh, Return to Tell Us and the outing with the Cyberman at the end of season four of Tom Baker's uh, Big Finish season, where they're running around in the background of uh, Tomb of the Cybermen. And here we have it again with an outing where the fourth doctor is trying to piece together a past adventure with this not of all the facts. So where to begin? Okay. Jake, okay, can I get your opening thoughts please me on Dumb Waiter, Fraser Hines and Louise Jameson? I have to admit, I thought it was a really lovely little story. I like the idea of the future interacting with the past. I adored the big fat lady that always said darling. For me, she is like she was like the epitome of like old British sitcoms, like Bub, um, Bubbles Devere from Little Britain or Mrs. Bouquet. That's mm. what she reminded me. Hands down, one of my favourite side characters. I thought she was hilarious, and then that bit near the twist at the end, who she turned out to be. I like that as well. And it was quite emotive, this story, especially near the end. I liked the interaction between Leela and Victoria. I thought it was really sweet, and that's all I'm going to say about this story this week. Uh, yes, uh, just for your FYI, folks, Louise Jameson also pulls triple duty here as narrator slash Leela slash batshit crazy Miss De Winter, um, who's fond of the sandwiches, and it's not all she appears. Um, but, yeah, it's it's a good outing for her. Timbo, uh, open the thoughts, Dan Waiter. Yeah, it's it's good. It's it's 100% fan service, or what do you call mm. it? I mean, the whole idea is the impetus for the the story was actually the discussion they had in the other story you mentioned about uh, Tell Us. Yep. And uh, apparently, ever since then, um, it's been a mission for 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 both Fraser Hines and Louise Jameson to, to get to get a story that features both Jamie and Leela, uh, and that's what that's what that's where this came from, which is pretty cool. I mean. Uh, and they did it in a pretty clever way because they, they make it about the, the fourth doctor trying to remember something yeah. or something. And then you got the two doctors helping each other uh, inadvertently, sort, sort of. Uh, it, it's, it's really cool. It, it gives a new spin on a lot of the characters as well because obviously these are the two characters, as Fraser Hines put, these are the two char characters that carry weapons. So, I mean, mm. that's one thing that, that and they're both considered like uh, the doctor's protector in a way yeah uh, so so it was a cool opportunity to do that and i think uh, it was a pretty clever story uh and, and it ended up being a lot of fun i mean having having just the two of them do the whole story you forget that because you think you're listening to the doctor and you think mm. you're listening to to this crazy woman so i mean it, it was a lot of fun yep what well, you can call there mate uh sue home and thoughts done well yeah um i like the bit where the Oh, um, my opening thoughts are, this is really clever. It's really fun. Um, I love the, the interplay between Jamie and Leela, and I love the interplay between Mr. Winter and the, and the Doctor. Hmm. 
and I love the the the, the reality shifting back and forth between yep. <clears throat> between the garden party and the the alien landscape. All right, cool. Well, what do you reckon, mate? Open the thoughts. Uh, yeah, like like Texas said, this is fan service. But it, it was a great story because um, listening in the beginning, you don't, you don't understand that, that Lila is in the Tartars already because of, or you notice that somebody's eating the um, food from the machine. Yeah. So, and then, of course, she pops up to attack Jamie while the doctor and Victoria are outside the Tartars. And that stood out really good. It's a shame that Deborah Wally passed away. Mm. She would have been, she would have been, her voice would have been on this story too. So that's going to be, um, you don't hear it no more, sorry to say. But, but you got to give credit that these two, Actors play double role, besides triple the if you could the narrator. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So that stood out pretty good, and the story flow real well. Uh, um, the, the what I gotta give props is um, even though Texas said that these two companions carry knives, there had there had been other companions that carried on weapons too, like the brigadier and uh, G Marsh character with the first doctor like that. Mm. Even though what happened to her, we don't we know what happened to her. So you gotta give props to this story. And of course, he's going to get bonus points. It has, it has a great director, and we talked about other stuff too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, our uh, customary character, buddy, Lisa. Um, we have to always get that in uh, whenever she directs these stories. Um, for me, yeah, I enjoyed the hell out of this. Not since Paul Hogan's Crocodile Dundee, when you had a couple of people comparing the size of their knives, have I had so much fucking fun. Um, basically, the whole you know, comparison of the two warrior aspects of the two companions at a different time period I really enjoyed, um, the distrust. Because if these two showed up and just immediately took a liking to one another, that, that would have been pretty boring. I think they mentioned that in the behind the scenes. Um, you needed some type, type of conflict to keep the story moving along. And the distrust uh, uh, echoed that brilliantly and also fed into the story. Uh, Zalila was still coming to the terms with the fact that this wee fell away the Beatles haircut was actually the doctor with a scarf that she left behind at the beginning of the story. So that was uh, that was quite good. Um, Mr. Winter, fair play to Louise James near it, it was batshit crazy. It was over the top in places, especially when she always was referring to the vicar. Um, but um, that was the point of the character and there was a reason for it and you found it at the end when she turned out to be one of the, uh, the alien menaces as well. So um, interesting stuff there. Um, the piecing together of the puzzle, it served its purpose, it was a, it was a good story arc, and um, it gave you a story with Leila and James, so you cannot really complain. And with that, guys, any events within this tale that stood out for you? Uh, Timbo, and we stand up, mate. Well, I thought it was interesting, um, like as Will pointed out, it's sad that we don't have Deborah Watling around to yeah. do these kind of things, and it would have been an entirely different story if they did. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they did manage to prop up her character quite well yes. at the end, I think. They, they made her go on a little arc as well, where Leela, who obviously has no time for her yep. uh, at the beginning, by the end of it realized that actually this is a, a, a little brave young woman as well. So I thought mm -hmm. that was a pretty clever thing to do with a character that's actually absent from the story. That's also, this, this, is one of the few, this is one of the few times they actually have the doctor narrating. Because uh, Fraser was narrating as the doctor more often than he was than, than Jamie. Um, and the writer says in the behind the scenes that he had to structure this a certain way that, that, that it's almost as if the fourth doctor is just listening to this take, take place himself with the, the different characters telling their yeah. part. Mm -hmm. So he's very careful with the, the only, to, to stop using Leela at one point and to have somebody else take the narration at this point because she couldn't know what that person was thinking. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. That yeah, that that, cool. yeah, that, that's true. Um, you, you've got to keep all that in check, and that's why you had Patrick Drown's daughter narrating at the very end when we were always coming back. And uh, having said that, though, I think they they might have missed the trick because uh, uh, they say that Leela won't remember because of the the time ring had the yeah. device on it that kept her that kind of cleared her memory of it. But what? Why doesn't the fourth doctor recognize Leela when he meets her on the planet of the seventeen? Then because he's he's obviously going to have two's memories, will he not? Or Good bloody point. Although at one point, did the, 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 the Trouton Doctor not in the story not say, I, I'll need to remember to recognize you? Hmm. I, I don't recall exactly. I just wondered if that was just one, something they, they missed. They might have done. Also, yeah. you might think that maybe when the Doctor was sent to Earth and forced to regenerate into the Third, perhaps hmm. they wiped his memory. Because remember well, the Third, not really sure who he was. Yeah, who knows? Hey, you're so, doing big finish job, man. they got to pay you if you come up with these ideas. Yeah. <laughs> 
they don't they don't uh, they don't necessarily have to connect them because through the through the you know face of evil because the 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 doctor has a different sort of uh, memory pro processes than the well, you know you can always just say time was rewritten somewhere along the line and he doesn't remember. Her. That's 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 the old ah, point. Fuck it, when they get, when, yeah, when, when they get drunk in a deadly assassin, they forgot. There you go. Um, <laughs> well, anything for you? Well, of course, Leela stood out right here because of her meeting the second doctor, even though she never she didn't, took her while to believe that it was the doctor at all. Mm -hmm. So her character stood out right there, even though she and of course she tried to kill him. <laughs> yeah, if we go in the beginning when you hear the fourth doctor sort of say, "Did you stab me with a Janice Dawn?" and that and that's what. She used on the second. Luckily, it wasn't a real one because only yeah. it only paralyzed them. So that that was pretty good. Her character stood out pretty good. And like t Tim said, um, even though Deborah Wall is not with us, her character stood out pretty good, especially when she had to get to learn how to drive a vehicle real quickly. <laughs> oh <laughs> the, yeah, yeah. For somebody, was, <laughs> for, for somebody who was in the background to the story, she ended up being the resolution. Yeah. So you gotta get you gotta give a props for that. For the, at least, yeah. it was, uh, it's a shame that she's no longer with us, but she's still yeah. happy to good in this story. Okay. So, anything for you? I'll agree. I thought that the part where she was, uh, Victoria and Leela were having to, you know, sort of go through and figure out which is rich. And and also, you know, Leela's commentary on, on Victoria's ability to fight with so okay. many frills and so much like floof on her dress mm. you know that was that was funny too and i liked the the fraser hines dealing with de winner um you know the whole you know her, her his description of her that she was the same size tall as she was uh side to side or around i yeah. thought that was really cute funny fine so. boned okay cool jake i have a few minutes one, look, there's a couple of things I want to pick up on. The first thing is, I love the mind fuckery of this. Oh, here we story. go. Hashtag mind fuckery. All right, okay, yeah. It was a very mind fuck episode, which I really liked. And I'm going to touch a bit up on um, Deborah Watling. I met her once. She's one of the loveliest people I've ever met in my life. And I think this story cemented her legacy. I think it was a good send off for Deborah Watling in a way. A uh, character made like, gave her more strength, and I like that. And the scene with Tra not Troughton, the second Doctor and Leela under that rose gazebo, mm. I really like that scene as well. And as Leela's confusion, I love Louise Jameson. I love Leela as a character, and I love how most of the story she didn't have any fucking idea what was going on. And that's why, <laughs> that is why I love Leela. She is so clueless of what's going on, and by the end, she gave all these powerful speeches. And I think it was a really, really good story for both Leela and Victoria, to be honest. Yeah, um, I'd agree with that. The, the writer did make a point, uh, make sure this was really, really early on, and Leela was time with the Doctor. So it's like, okay, she's not exactly clued up in every aspect of the whole time travel thing, for one. Um, I love the whole realisation thing that the second Doctor and eventually finds out, oh shit, hang on, she's got a time ring, someday down the line, those bastard time lords are going to catch up with me again. I suppose I'll have to live with that. That um, was an interesting thing that they did with his character too, because yeah. it, it's not like the Doctor always worried about that in that time, but, mm. they, but they, since, since we know his future, uh, I think it was interesting that, that maybe it's something he has to worry about, because it's, 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 it's funny because if you think of his counterpart in the story, uh, the fourth Doctor, that's, that's been there, done that, and he's completely yeah. unconcerned about that. Whereas the second doctor is very worried about it. Mm. So that's pretty cool. Yep, yep. And they, 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 they make sure they add that in to basically slap you in the face where I went first. You say, okay, the war games haven't here yet, but they're coming. So um, there you go. Um, the whole fight scenes with, with Jamie and Leela, I thought were great. <laughs> Fantastically done. You actually hear in the behind the scenes, Lisa Barman trying to. You I know, know she's like directing them. Like, okay, you're gonna fall down and then you're, you're gonna, gonna jump. Put him in a half Nelson like and <laughs> <laughs> absolutely brilliant, man. It's like cho 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 choreographing a freaking wrestling match, but um, yeah, they, <laughs> good stuff. Um, 
And I also got a kick out the fact that at the beginning nobody believed Jamie that he wasn't the one eating the food at the food dispenser machine. All you had with these nod bones, you know. That, no, uh, but you got to remember that when when he, when he was um st- hiding, look, trying to find out who it was, you hear him say to himself, "Oh, I could kill for another haggis, man." He, just <laughs> <laughs> he started to get hungry again. Like you got to be kidding me. Yeah, that's the thing about Jamie. He's he's, uh, he's partial to his stomach. So uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I wish Leila got fed while she was on the excursion, I'll say that much. Right, guys, open my portion of the cast, something else you want to bring up before we get us rated in any can. Well, I would say that it was interesting in the behind the scenes. I, th- I found that very interesting that, that uh, these guys had such a great time working together. Hmm. And uh, he reminds him that the first time that they worked together was back in uh, his soap, which was... Uh, oh, Emmerdale. Emmerdale. Emmerdale Farm. And she mentioned that somebody had sent it to her. Yeah. So... Uh, I went and looked it up on YouTube, and I found that episode. That's right, you sent the quote test, yeah. Yeah, she, she, uh, she, she, she was only on for like three or four episodes. Four or five episodes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wikipedia page and found out which what year it was, and sure enough, they're all on YouTube. But uh, the, I think it was 73. Um, yeah, 73. And um, it was interesting, too, that, that they point out she was the first soap character ever to be killed off. In a, first, I mean, I, I, in that particular there. show, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, she said she... She just mm. did her work because she was dead off screen or whatever. So I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Oh, go down by the farm. Hey? Yeah. I, I, I got to give credit to Louise Drainson because not only did doing Leela was great, but when she played the role of the other character, you couldn't tell their voices apart. It, it, it was very different, you know, even though you could tell I, the. Yeah. Even for some funny reason, I don't know why Leela and Jamie are describing this woman as a big, fat, you know. Uh, enormous woman like uh, and then other talks you hear oh she she what you know sounded like a little bit like Al Bundy like describing a woman t- t- to be fair I, I could tell it, I could tell it was her in, in portions of the dialogue but no yeah um well, you, was just, she, she's just acting another part I mean yeah yeah, yeah, yeah thing, but she's nothing like Lila Lila no, yeah. no, no, fat woman Yes, it's just, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you know and I loved I loved the fact how through the was it what was what she kept calling him was that little knife Little knife. Yeah, little knife. Yeah, well, little <laughs> knife, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I thought that was quite good. So um, there you go. Anyone else, guys? No. And More. and she called him and she called him like kid or son or something like that. And he was like, "Oh, I fully, I'm fully happy with her calling me a, a, a little mm. boy or something like that." All right. Well, while well, well, we're on other names, uh, obviously. Madame de Winter, or whatever the fuck her name was, kept calling him James. You're like, what? James? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, that's just a, a you know, a, a, a deviation of Jamie, but same thing. Well, right, unusual, it's unusual that um, the, the lady and uh, maybe her companion, uh, the, the, they're, supposed to be, they're supposed to be prisoners in that place, right? Carlos. Yeah. Carlos, they're supp- yeah. They're supposed to be like prisoners there, right? Yeah, apparently. But was 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 funny. Uh, I don't. It never mentioned what crime they committed to be locked up there. Mm. No, but they they, they got to escape the underground cave. Then they get run here with Deborah Watwin's fucking Victoria. Then that's it. You're like, what the hell? Then the cops apparently show up off screen. You're like, what? But <laughs> hey, it's only on fifteen minutes. What can you do? That's true. Anyone else? Nope. Well, it's that time again. For England's annual, who is the best web that makes sandwich contest? <laughs> mm. Add the cucumber, fuck the mayo, and slap on some mustard. And bacon. <laughs> Obviously yeah. the queen. Oh, there you go, yeah. <laughs> Release the corgis! Um, <laughs> <laughs> Dumb where? Fraser Hines and Louise Jameson. Companion Chronicle, Season 12, Story Number 1. Jake, what do you set a I will give this lovely little story an eight and a half out of ten for me. Eight point five out of ten for Jake. He's very happy. Sue, what say you? I'll do him a half more. I'll give it a nine. Nine is fine. Down mass way. Thank you. Timbo, what's the number from Techie Coley? I'm going to give it a nine point five. I thought it was very good, very original. Uh, and even though it was just a bit of fan service, it's, it's hardly the most consequential story ever. You know what I mean? But it was a lot of fun, and they had a lot of fun doing it. You could tell. So yeah, I give it a nine point five. Excellent, man. 
Um, well, what's the number of my MYC, man? I'm going to also give it a 9.5 out of four. I love to see these two team up again, whether Lila is in Gallifrey and maybe she could do something, but I would love to see these two ca- actors do another story together. I mean, they stood out pretty good. And I, I'd agree with that. In fact, I think that the actors themselves want to have a couple together, if it's at all possible, to squeeze them on in there. And uh, as a result of that, I'll give this a 9 out of 10 as well. Um, like Tim alluded to, it's fan service, but it's no convoluted, and it, it, it's no detriment to the either timeline. So it's, it's good shit. And if for an hour and 15 minutes, it's high worth your time, folks. Give it a wish if you can tolerate the ratio. And with that, done, dusted, and in the can for the evening. Another one in the can, as they say. And it just leaves us to divulge what we're doing next week. In the absence of Tinkerbell, well, could you please divulge what we're doing next week for John Pertwee's Foot Doctor? The Many Deaths of Joe. Yes, The Many Deaths of Joe Grant, and another companion chronicle outing for the outstanding Kitty Manning, Batchet Crazy as she is, and her Joe Grant. So we'll look forward to that, and we'll see how that one tackles out. And with that, please check out our buddies in the wonderful work of the world of the YouTube. You've got the guys and dolls that Geeks Assembled with a movie, TV, and audio head reviews. You've got Dr. Freedom, his huge broadcast, his Omega Files, and the adventure of Dr. Freedom Eric. You've got Johnny Blues, Sammy Carter, Mike Shannon, whenever he's online, if he ever gets back online. Like, share, comment, subscribe, thumbs up, thumbs down. We're getting the hell on it here. It's Sunday night. It's almost the start of another working week. Boo! And, uh, but we're yeah. going to watch Preacher. And yes, we're off to watch Preacher. Be excellent to yourself, folks, and each other, and we will see you next week. Fuckity bye.